So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's leadership lecture series. We are very excited to have with us Ms. Anna Garcia, who is a city manager for Dania Beach and has just had an amazing career as a city manager. And we're so excited for her to share with us her leadership journey and just her professional um, development experience. Thank you so much for joining us, Anna. Thank you, uh, Professor Agatha, for everything that you do for, um, for professional development, and you're just a tremendous um, inspiration. And I'm glad that you always tap into us. And it's great to be able to give back and to mentor the students, especially from FIU, my alma mater. So thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you. So if you wouldn't mind just kind of um, share some questions, but feel free to just tell us how you got your start in, in public service. OK, so um, I, I originally was a physical education major. I, I loved sports. I played sports since I was seven years old. Um, but, but then I started thinking, do I really want it to be limited to just physical education and having to follow a curriculum where if six weeks we were going to do deck tennis and kids weren't interested in deck tennis. And then by, by coincidence, actually, a friend of mine who was at FIU told me, hey, there's a really cool major here at FIU. I ended up transferring from the University of Miami. Um, so it was Parks and Recreation. And I started looking into Parks and Recreation. I, I met uh, Dr. Wolf, which was a dean at the time. And I was actually part of the first graduating class of FIU. And when I looked at, at Parks and Recreation, that became an, an avenue um, for me that has led me to become a, a director of Parks and Recreation for my hometown of South Miami, where I went to high school. Um, then I became an assistant city manager. And that led me to, in 2009, I was recruited to be a manager in a small town um, called Biscayne Park um, in Miami-Dade County. So after spending four and a half years in Biscayne Park, I was recruited by the then mayor of North Miami Beach. So I went from a, a, a little under a $3 million budget to over a $180 million budget in a city of 4,000 people to a city of close to 50,000 people. So that I spent five great years in North Miami Beach. Always my career had been in, in Miami-Dade County. And then there was a great opportunity um, here in the city of, of Dania Beach, um, which is Broward's first city. Um, it's a city that's over 116 years old. And I've been here in Dania Beach now in Broward County for a year and a half. And I've, I'm super happy here with, with the team. I know that's kind of come up is, if you wouldn't mind uh, just the, um, the representation of women in um, city managers. And I know we've been fortunate to have a few that participate in this series, but just to give um, our, our viewers an idea of just how underrepresented you are and how impactful it is to have um, representation down here. Without a doubt, um, during my, my 10 years in, in Miami-Dade County, there was only, um, out of the 28 cities that, that were manager uh, council form of government, consistently it was just myself representing the cities that I mentioned, um, Josie Galliano, who's in Pinecrest, and Yolanda, a good friend of mine, who's in the city of West Miami. You would have other managers come in and, and leave, but um, yeah, the, the strong majority had always been men. But I'm very grateful to, to having been recruited. Um, and, and now there's a movement um, of more city managers uh, that, that are women. And even when I started my career in parks and recreation, again, not too many directors back then. But, but I think that we need to um, continue to represent and, and sooner or later people see um, your drive and your dedication and, um, and, and I think we're on a path for a whole lot more of diversity and, and inclusion in the field. And that actually ties into one of the questions that was submitted from uh, Clara Levy that what did you do in your prior positions that attracted positive attention to your abilities and how did you make yourself stand out? Well, I, I think the key was always going above and beyond. So when when we as women or, or, or we as people or as minorities get an opportunity, once that door opens, it's not just about getting in, it's about staying in. 
And, and the key is, and, and right behind me, I have this tree that says success on the top. But what you don't see is the roots. And the roots basically says let, late nights, sacrifices, persistence. Um, you're going to have criticism. You, you're going to have people that, that, that are against you. But sooner or later, even if a door opens, one will open soon thereafter because people remember perseverance, a good attitude, going above and beyond. I was never that manager that thought, oh, I've become a manager, so here I am in my office. No, I will roll up my sleeves. And my mom and my dad always told me, and they're, they're immigrants to this country. They told me, never forget where you came from. So the same level of respect that I have for the mayor or a commission or a department director, I have for Mr. Willie, the janitor. And, and that has to stay consistent. And you have to be genuine. And um, so as a, woman, you, as a woman, you have to balance it. You have to deliver, but you still have to show empathy, but you also have to stand your ground and be consistent on, on the game plan. I always stick to a certain model that I have and it's called RISE and it stands for respect, integrity, service, and excellence. So you've got to stick to your fundam fundamental game plan. And if, if people see that, they know that, that, that they can follow that leader. And, and that has been the key to my success and having good mentors okay. and then being a mentor. So it's, it's a give and take constantly and having that, that balance. One thing too that I recommend, I've traveled all around the world. I love photography. I love learning from books, but I've been able to travel. I have one more continent to go, Australia, but um, I give so much of myself but I also have to refuel. Mm -hmm. Don't ever think for a minute, and that's why you don't have football season year round. You don't have basketball season year round, because to give with such an, in, you know intensity and such passion, you also have to refuel and have time for yourself and for your family, and then come back energetic. Empower your people. When I go on vacation, I have my deputy city manager, and I'm not calling him every two seconds. He's empowered. I step yeah. back. And I come back super energized. No, and that's good. And I can attest you take some beautiful photography. <laughs> We're friends on Facebook and, and, and you see that. And I share um, my photography and my trips with people, but also making sure. I, I don't want you all to ever feel guilty. That's why you have your vacation days. Take them. And, and from, from the get-go, communicate that to your bosses. I'm going to give you my heart and soul, and I'm going to be extremely passionate but know that I'm going to take my vacations and come back, refuel and, and re-energize. And I'm really glad you mentioned that because again, it, it is important, you know, cause you guys do work so hard and you have so many responsibilities that being able to take the time, like you said, to recharge and refuel yourself so you don't deplete your own battery. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and one thing that you had mentioned that I wanted to go back to was the mentors um, and just how impactful it is to have mentors and how you develop and kind of nurture those relationships. Well, I, I started working in the city of South Miami back in 1997. I was hired by Mr. Dennis Witt, who was a city manager at that time. Three months later, after I was hired, the manager was no longer the manager. So in comes this gentleman, Mr. Charles Skur. I didn't know him. He didn't know me, um, but we developed a really great relationship. Um, 20 plus years later, he's not only a great friend, my former boss, but, but a great mentor. And um, every Christmas, every holiday, he would give us all books and he would dedicate that book. And now every year, I give books to my, to my employees. I, I read books and um, I make sure that I, since I was mentored and I was, you know, supported that I do the same thing. And, and that's why I make time to do what I'm doing here and make time to be involved in my, in my professional organization. I was president of the Miami-Dade County um, City and County Managers Association. Um, and when any, anybody calls me, um, I, pick, I pick up the phone and I, and I talk to them. There's a lot of new managers um, that reach out to me during the process. And I think that's also very, very important. But mentorship, you know, reading good books, um, 
and having a really good network. I mean, I can pick up the phone and call 20 managers, you know, at, at any time. Um, and they can pick up the phone and call me. And that tapping into those uh, resources, it's like having a, a reservoir of people. The minute that you think that you know it all, that's the minute that you stop growing and, and developing. I agree completely. Um, and I've also been fortunate to have Charles Kerr as, as a mentor. Um, and again, a lot of, as um, Anna had mentioned, that comes from getting involved with professional associations. Um, you know, she, I worked with Charles Kerr through ASPA, the American Society for Public Administration. And on those same lines, that's given us an opportunity to work with city managers uh, like Anna um, and Miami-Dade City County Management Association. Um, so really kind of taking that to heart to get involved and to make those connections because um, short term, long term, um, they really do matter. I wanted to go to one of the other questions um, that was submitted. Um, and she basically, um, Salon was actually on the call and I know we kind of touched on this earlier was, do you have any particular professional development advice for female public administration students? I do actually and, and the key is is mostly found in in interactions but but not just with women with with men um this is this is one of my favorite books and it's 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 john maxwell and it's the 21 irrefutable laws of of leadership i've probably read this book like three times i have one on my nightstand at home and i have one here and and, and it's a constant reference um, I also have The Man in the Arena. It was a speech by Theodore Roosevelt. Um, and my former HR director gave me this, but the very first time I heard about The Man in the Arena was from my former mayor in North Miami Beach, um, who talked to me about it. And it says, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man and women who is actually in the arena. And, and I su suggest that you look at it and, and you research it. Um, you gotta have thick skin. In, in what we do, I've learned that you are going to be critique. Um, people are going to put you down. Um, and a lot of the time, believe it or not, but it's the truth, it's gonna come from other women. It's going to come from other women. I have learned that we need to work together as women. Um, envy and jealousy exist. I, I don't understand those emotions or those feelings. Um, I've always believed in, in, in being very happy. Um, whenever I've been down, I've been able to tap into um, my, my colleagues, um, Mayor, um, I mean, excuse me, Manager Josie from Pinecrest. We have each other on, on speed dial. Um, Manager Yolanda from, from West Miami. Um, in, in our field, you know, if you can't feel the heat, you got to stay out of the kitchen. And there's got going to be a lot of heat here. But um, what, what continues to allow me to brush myself up and pick myself up again is um, knowing that I have, you know, very, very good relationships very important to have very, very good relationships that people that are there for you during the bad times. My dad, and may he rest in peace, would always tell me, you know who your friends are when things are going great, but you need to know who your friends and your colleagues are when you've lost your job, when you're really going through difficult moments, when there's a write-up in the, in the paper that is unjust, there's gonna be things that are unjust, and unfair, but it, it, it builds your, your, your character. I always like to keep also positive things around me. So here I have this stone. A lot of the time I, I, I face this stone outward and lately during the challenges of COVID or the challenges after a hurricane, I put it so I could see it and it's by Albert Einstein. And it says, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. So you, you have to find strength from within, but also strength, strength from, from your colleagues and, and from your family as well. 
And particularly during these challenging times, um, what are some of the challenges that you're facing, you know, as a city manager in your particular municipality? Well, you know, COVID hit us out of the blue. I mean, it hit us out of the blue. Um, we were ready. We signed a telework policy and I made it official by the second week of, of, of March. Um, we've been teleworking. We, we do have a hybrid. We were ready to open um, this coming Monday, November the 2nd, but there was a, a, a terrible um, breakout of COVID-19 in, in our sister city, in our neighboring city in Fort Lauderdale at their city hall. Um, I've learned that you have to be flexible and that you have to be able to shift gears at all times. Throughout this pandemic, we have been communicating with our elected officials and they've been so supportive. Um, and, and that's based on the confidence that they, the confidence that they have in me. And they have that confidence in me because of the team that I've been able to surround myself with. I have a great HR director that had a telework policy ready to go. We've shared our telework policy with other cities, but I think you have to be flexible. You have to be, you know, innovative. You have to think outside the box and you have to be 10, 10 steps ahead. But having been a manager during hurricane season and having been a parks director, when you've been challenged before, back in 2005, I was the director of parks and recreation um, in the village of Palmetto Bay. Beautiful, beautiful city, the village of parks. Well, we got hit in 2005, August 29th by Katrina. And our mayor said to then, you know, city manager Stur, I would like to be one of the first cities to open up all our parks. So imagine, I, I get to Coral Reef Park, 50 something acres. It, it's a mess. It looks like a war zone. So we work day and night, seven days a week from sunup to sunset. We get the park ready to go. Then October 24th of the same year, a month and a half later, we get hit by Wilma. So what do we do again? We roll up our sleeves. I never thought that I would be using a chainsaw as a director. But thank God when I was a rec leader back in the city of Miami, in the city of Miami Beach, I learned how to use all that. And, and, and now personally, I can open it up. But you have to be ready. Surround yourself always with a good team. And if you have to close your door and you're frustrated and you have to cry or, 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 or scream when nobody is watching, let it out. Exercise. Exercise is extremely important for me. Um, I, I got to walk it out two to three days walk it out in my, in my city, in, in my parks. Um, but you have to find a way to let out steam, recover, get back on track because you have to leave and people are looking at you and they cannot see you all gloomy. They gotta, they gotta see a leader that is, um, positive and resourceful. Fantastic. I wanted to address a question that was also submitted. Um, you know, even when you have sometimes the degree um, and experience, you still see sometimes uh, people who seem to have lesser qualifications um, being moved into positions. And I think this might kind of address back to what you said is about also having those relationships because um, like a lot of fields, it is about who you know and, and not what do you know. How do you balance um, that? And what advice would you give to um, students to be able to develop those networks to be um, competitive? Well, first of all, don't ever be discouraged because sooner or later, your, your time will come. Sooner or later, your time is going to come. You, you cannot focus too much on what you don't have control over. Okay. There were times that, yes, I saw promotions. I saw folks being um, appointed manager um, that, that didn't have the, the qualifications or the success or the, or the experience, the proven success, factual success. But like I said before, at the end of the day, if that door doesn't open for you, you got to let it out of your system and stay on track. Continue to do what you do. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned ASPA. Been, in, been involved in ASPA, been involved in, in the Managers Association. Um, reach out to my network of, of friends. Um, but, but sooner or later, that tree behind me, success, but look at all the roots.
there's going to be disappointments and there's going to be criticism, um, but perseverance. You have to continue to persevere. L look at the athletes that were ready to go to Japan for the Olympics. The Olympics are not going to happen until next year. You can only have so much of a, of a pity party. And my mom, I've always gone to my mom and God bless her. She's 90 years old. Hey, mommy, you know, this wasn't right. And, and she never, never embraces pity. She says, Anna, it wasn't meant for you. You will see something better will happen. And she's always been right. So what I tell you, dust yourself off. Don't focus on what wasn't fair. Continue to make yourself better despite any rejection. Rejection is part of life, but it's not the rejection. It's how we deal with it and how do we continue to move forward. That's such great advice. And I've definitely applied that in my own life. Sometimes those biggest disappointments can be your biggest motivators to get you going on to another path that's better for you. So. <laughs> Without a doubt, use those rejections as stepping stones. Any, any stone that somebody throws at you, you know, lay them down as a path to pave the way forward, Agatha. I'm so glad you said that, Professor, because it's true. Very cool. Um, I'm going to go to another question, which I think really we've already kind of touched in different ways, but what are the five most important values of your everyday work and how do you apply them um, in your team and motivating them? Integrity has to be number one. You can never, ever compromise your principles. I don't care if I have to step down from my position, but your team needs to see a leader that practices what they preach. So going back to rise, respect, you can never waver on that. You cannot just be respectful and kind to those that are above you or those that are in certain positions and then, you know, ignore the janitor or ignore that part-time rec leader. Guess what? I was that part-time rec leader you know, back in the 80s in the city of Miami, you know, cleaning locker rooms and, and, and cleaning the pools. So, you know, in a way, I'm so glad that my career didn't start at the top, that my career started, you know, as a rec leader in the city of Miami, then those six years that I spent in Miami Beach and my parents continuing to keep me humble because both my parents, when they got to this country, they, they worked in, 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 in factories. So respect, integrity, and a commitment to excellence in service. We're public servants. No matter what we need to deliver during the pandemic, we cannot have excuses just because we're working remotely. We have found a way to be better at doing things virtually, um, being able now for individuals to come and access those permits on, online. The, the silver lining in, in, in even adverse situations. So respect, integrity, service, excellence, and you gotta be consistent. You have to be consistent because that would lead to, to the respect and that would lead to, to a career um, of, of excellence. So th th those are pretty much my, my, my five core values that I stick to all the time. Now, what advice would you give for students um, seeking internships? Um, what do you think is the best way for students to kind of approach that and to identify those opportunities, um, especially in this climate where everything is virtual? Well, I guess, I guess the key is going back to persistence. You know, reach out to the HR director. If there's 33 cities, you know, um, in Miami-Dade County or 34 cities, if the 31 here in, in, in Broward County, reach out to the HR director, send a letter to the HR director, you know, let them know what you can bring to the, to the team. If you don't hear from one, then you may hear from the second, but you, you gotta be persistent and consistent. Um, a couple of months ago, I, I, I get a call and then followed by, by an email from um, Mr. George Alderman. He was supposed to do his internship. Um, he's a senior at, at, at Stetson University, president of class president. 
he was supposed to do his internship in Washington, D.C. Um, that did not materialize. So he lives in Hollywood. He reached out to me and he spent, you know, two and a half months here with us. But you always have to have a, a plan B and, and be persistent. Reach out to the HR director, send a letter to the city managers. We can always use really good, motivated students. It, it's good to get a different perspective of, of a student. Um, again, because the, the true managers, the ones that believe that, that they can still learn and grow and, and, and evolve, we, we were able to get a lot from, from our interns. So some cities may not even have an internship program, but by you reaching out to them, maybe you can help them not only be the, the intern, but help them to start an internship program as well. No, that's, that's great advice and um, definitely being persistent. And I always tell students, if there isn't an opportunity, reach out. Maybe <laughs> you can help create one. So I, I'm really glad that you, um, you know, stated the same. Um, the other um, advice I'd like you to perhaps give to our students is once they do apply, um, what do you look for in candidates? How does somebody really kind of stand out? Um, and again, you, you mentioned respect and integrity um, and service. How does um, the best way for people to come across um, and to be able to show that in an interview? Well, the, your character um, and, and, and your honesty and your genuineness. I, I have a radar and hopefully I can use the word BS. I, I have a, I have a, a radar for disingenuous people. And, and it's always very important to just be yourself. Have a conversation. Talk about your, your, your strength. And, and also talk about your, your references. Remember that at a very young age, you're, you're setting a path for your future. Very, very, very important what you tweet what you post on, 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 on Facebook, um, you know, Instagram, social media, people are looking at that. You know, you want to be a really good example. Um, I don't want to be embarrassed. I, I want to make good decisions. Whenever I bring an intern in and I'm able to pick up the phone and not just the references that they list, but me randomly calling someplace where they work, and somebody would say, you know what, that individual was such a hard worker. Um, that individual was so, so passionate. Um, you want passionate people that um, are, are willing to, to contribute and, and know that when you're starting off, you have to be as comfortable doing something as doing something. If, if all of a sudden we get hit by a hurricane and you're working in IT or you're working in HR, you know, and I say, hey, you know, um, Mary, come and join us and clean up that park. You need to be able to shift gears and put on a T-shirt and a mask and help us clean out a park. So, you know, being confident, but 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 being humble and, and knowing how to balance the two. Very important. No, that's great advice. Definitely. Um, and I agree wholeheartedly with that. Um, they're really you just you have to be true. And even when you think people aren't paying attention. <laughs> They are, um, so it's always best to put your best foot forward at all times. Absolutely. And you know what? Ask for what you want. Mm -hmm. Ask for what you need. Sometimes we forget. You know, I still can pick up the phone and, and call another agency or another department. You know, when we go to Tallahassee to try to get a piece of, of that state pie, and, and we're, you know, when we're being advocates for the city, I have no problem saying, hey, you know what, um, you know, Mr. Governor, or Mr. Congressman, you know, can, can you support, you know, our, our, our grant and can you support this water project? So I think it's very important for you guys to get to the point of, you know, I'd like to be your intern. Can, can you support me? Because if you invest in me, you're going to get a great return for your investment. Just be straightforward. Give me an opportunity to be your intern give me an opportunity to work for you um and, and and you will not be disappointed people are afraid to ask for what they want you know what's the worst thing that, that can happen that 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 someone says no but you don't want to you don't ever want to live with a what if oh my god what if i i, I should have asked this or, no or, uh, if i would have said that but also be prepared 
if, if you're going to work at a city, do, do your research and, and, and be prepared because that impresses people. If you're going to come work for me, know a little bit about Dana Beach. Go, go, to, go to the parks, find out, you know, you know, what are our strengths and what are some of the challenges. Tune into a commission meeting. So there's a lot of proactive things that you can do. That's such great advice. Um, definitely, that's one thing that we keep hearing is do your research, be prepared, um, and show a genuine different in interest because um, definitely it does come across. The other thing with mentors, and I'm glad you mentioned that, I've recently, I've taken on some new mentees this semester, but it also caused me to reflect on my own mentors. Um, and on that note, I reached out to about five professors and administrators from across the country that I've admired from afar um, and asked their mentors. Um, I've heard back from two out of the five so far. I'm thrilled. Um, and again, it just took, um, and again, there's at no matter what level of your career you are, um, be a mentor, be a mentee, um, but also sponsors. And I, I think that's the big thing It's having mentors, but also people who will sponsor you and will speak up for you, will advocate for you is really important. Absolutely. So as you oh, go into your careers, and one thing um, as we're launching our ICMA mentoring ship program, um, and again, we'll definitely be reaching out soon <laughs> to ask you to be involved. Um, Reaching out to the Miami-Dade City County Management Association, I wanted to um, have you talk a little bit about what it means to be a credentialed manager and to get those credentials. It, it's extremely important um, because it, it shows that you, you're doing everything that you can with ongoing education. You, you cannot think, okay, I have my bachelor's degree or I got my master's and, you know, and Professor Agatha is a great example. You know, um, via ASPA, now getting involved with ICMA with, with the managers. With, with being a credentialed manager, you have to, to continue to keep your certification, be committed to, to, 40, to 40 hours a, a year. Whether it's reading books, you get 10 credits per book, um, going to, to the national conference, um, to the state conference, but you, you're able to have a, a finger on the pulse on, on on the latest trends and you're able to um, communicate. When, when I'm here in Florida and, and I'm at the national conference and I meet a manager from, from Texas or Louisiana, um, there are challenges that they may be facing that I get to learn from them, even though it's something that, that I've never had to deal with. But then again, you never know what you're going to deal with. If, if the pandemic has showed us everything is like, you just never know. So ongoing education is extremely important. You're going to be competing with other people. So if, if you can have that edge, the slight edge, and by the way, the slight edge is a great book that my parks and, and, and rec director gave to me, a really good book um, because it, it's something simple that you could do um, and do it every day. But having your certification shows that you're committed to the profession. So when you're committed, you can expect um, and demand that level of commitment from your department directors, from the department directors, from the rest of your team. You have to practice what, what you preach and continue to go that extra mile. I'm really glad you mentioned, because again, situations are always gonna change. There's always gonna be something new to learn, um, but being able to you know stay um, on top of it and kind of learning as we go along. As we kind of mentioned with COVID-19, um, everything changes, um, circumstances change. How do you as a city manager, you know, um, balance the, the needs of your different stakeholders from your residents to your business owners, to your visitors, uh, tourists? Um, how as a manager do you prioritize those? Well, safety comes first. Be before the pandemic, we were talking about safety and proactive efforts, um, working with our police department, with our fire department, working with our parks and recreation department. So if, if, if safety is, is something that's primary, then you can easily go from being, you know, proactive in, in your day to day. Um, our telework policy was in place. Um, as soon as the the emergency was declared. Um, but making sure that you're running the city in a very 
efficient and, and fiscally responsible manner. There were cities that had to furlough a lot of employees. We, we were fortunate. We didn't have to furlough employees. We actually invested in our city this year. This budget has several millions of dollars more um, in infrastructure, in investments, but we spent the last year and a half and prior to me being here, the city building the reserves. So it's very, very important personally and professionally because you can't be too different in how you manage your finances at home and in, in the way you uh, manage your finances in, in the cities that, that you lead. So in good times, you need to know that there's always going to be challenging moments. So if you have a requirement to keep X amount of money in the coffers or in the bank, you want to be above that. We were able to always be above that. So don't just shoot for the standard or just enough because this has ties and you can see it in, in, in states and you can see it in cities. We've lost revenue. Um, a lot of cities have lost a great deal of revenues. A lot of cities that depend on, on hotels and, and bed, ta bed, bed uh, taxes, local option gas taxes. So we've been hit left and right, but it's always good to have that foresight. I consider myself very lucky because I had a father, and even, though, even though I lost my dad 27 years ago, but my dad was born in 1917 and he told great stories. And being able to listen to factual stories of, of the Great Depression, of an immigrant story. My dad was 51 years old when he left everything behind and came from Cuba to the United States. So my dad was, was a great, great storyteller. And I thought that we were well off. It wasn't until my dad died that I looked at the income tax returns for my mom and my dad and I'm like, oh my God, we were super poor. But my dad was a very good manager of money. So you have to be able to manage your resources. Um, look, we, we waited for FEMA and we finally got all our reimbursement from Irma. But Irma happened in 2017. Imagine three years. So you're going to have to put money out to bring your city to where it needs to be. And FEMA will reimburse you. But imagine three years waiting. So you have to always make sure that you're running your finances for times like this. And never forget, we cannot have, you know, hurricanes happen and then, you know, forget to be prepared. So we cannot have this pandemic happen and us not learn to be better prepared. No, oh, that's amazing. Thanks so much. That's great advice. Um, since we're coming towards the end, I wanted to give uh, the students uh, a few chances to ask any questions. And because we're um, a small, intimate group, um, an opportunity to just to introduce yourselves um, to, you know, to the manager. And like I said, we all talked about relationships and making those connections. So I hope some of you will just kind of chime in, introduce yourselves. And if you have any questions or just comments. Don't be shy. I remember what we said about, you know, you have to put yourself out there sometimes. Good morning, Mrs. Garcia. Thanks. Thank you for joining us and for all the advice and your wise words for us. We appreciate your time. I'm so honored to be here and I'm so glad you jumped in. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you, Sylvia. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell um, Anna a little bit about yourself. My name is Sylvia Pereiro. I work at FIU at the College of Medicine. I've been here at FIU for seven years. And uh, prior to that, I worked at a uh, medical practice for 10 years as an office manager. And wow. now I, I did my bachelor's in 1992 and now I'm starting my master's. Awesome, good for you. I'm proud of you. And you know what? I I'm proud that you jumped in and you were the first one. So good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Sylvia has been wonderful. She's been such an incredible supporter of this series. So I just want to give her another shout out. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia, for everything that you're doing. And, and your best days are ahead of you. Don't ever forget that. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Sean um, isn't her camera mic at works, but she just wanted to thank you for sharing your experience. 
Thank you, Sean, for chiming in on the chat. Salam, Evangeline or Sydney, is there anything you'd like to share? Hello, good morning. I'm also at work. <laughs> so, Hi, hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. Um, I enjoyed your presentation and I have valuable insights now and a lot of great takeaways. I'm, um, I could identify a lot with what you said. Um, my parents were also immigrants. I'm also an immigrant. I was born um, in Cuba and raised in Miami. Um, so I could really identify with uh, the father being the great storyteller and the mother. So that was very, very familiar. Um, I, I also have, um, I wrote in the chat a question. Um, and my question is, what would you say to someone who's considering a move to Dania Beach and they're looking for a place to live? And what is it about Dania Beach that makes it special and stand out? How would you convince him or her to just go for it and move to your community? Well, Dania Beach is kind of like the epicenter of, of South Florida. Um, I, I, I work here, but I live in Miami, but I am a stone's throw away from the airport. Like if I threw a stone from my office, you know, and I used to play softball, it lands in, in the airport. You're also very, uh, very close to, to the seaport um, and the cruise port. Um, we have a, a, a super quaint beach. We have a great team of 150 employees that are um, delivering great, great services. We have very personal relationships with, with our community. We have a mayor and commission that are very responsible. Like I said, we're a very sound city with very strong reserves. And um, where we're, we're folks have had to raise taxes or lay off employees, um, we have not. We are actually investing in, in infrastructure, citywide lighting, um, transit and transportation, uh, master plan, um, great community uh, policing efforts. So it, it's a city that um, even though it's Broward's first city, it, it, it's a very, very community oriented city. Um, we're not too big, we're not too small. We're a city of about 35,000. Our housing is very diverse. Um, we have affordable housing. We have brand new condos. We have beautiful homes on the water. So we're a very diverse city. Um, great food. A lot of um, mom and pop local places. But um, you're you're in Miami within a couple of minutes. You're in um, the international airport here. We have great parks, great greenways, great waterways. Um, but it, it's a hometown feel and a lot of commitment that our employees have um, to our residents and to our business owners. We're also investing in our business relief program, working with Broward County. Um, we also have set aside $500,000 for people that have been hit by, by COVID and, and they, um, they cannot pay their rent for, for reasons that they have lost their job. So, it's a city that we demand a lot from our employees, but we're always um, also very empathetic um, with our people and willing to work with them. Well, I'm convinced. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Exactly. Okay. That was a great pitch. Um, definitely, oh, you know, you. look forward, you know, a place to, to live, work, and play. So Absolutely. Fantastic. I want um, everyone again to just join me in giving a round of applause, virtual round of applause. Um, I know Evangeline said that she can't type right now, but enjoy the um, presentation. I want to thank you again so much for joining us. And then if you just have any final thoughts you'd like to share, but we really appreciate you taking the time to share your, your time and expertise with us. Well, Professor Agatha, you are a great, great, great example. Um, I, I know how much you love your, your family. Your mom just had a birthday. Um, <laughs> happy birthday to your mom, another thank you. You know, woman out there. But you know, your, your, your kids, um, your, your commitment to your family, um, to, to FIU, to the profession, you're, you're a great, great example. You're an example for me, you know, um, and I think we just need to continue to be examples for each other. And I, I, I love you guys and I wish you the best and 
don't hesitate to, to reach out to me. Write down myself so you can have it. It's 305-972-0872. Um, I want you guys to have this, 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 you know, this thought knowing that you can always text me or call me. I might not be able to return your call right away, but text me. Whatever I can need, whatever I can be here to do to, to strengthen you if you have a need, reach out to me. But thank you personally for being an incredible inspiration, mentor, and a friend. I appreciate you. Thank you. God bless. Take care, guys. Thank Take care. So have much. a great day. Thanks, bye everyone, bye. for joining us. Take care, thank everyone. you. Bye-bye. Take care.